Hey everyone, John Fly here. Episode four of John Fly Versus. Very excited to be putting together another vlog. As was mentioned in the vlog episode three, uh, I talked about uh, online air traffic control and I said that I would later expound on some tips and tricks, some do's and some don'ts uh, when using air traffic control on your computer when flying your plane. Uh, today's uh, input and constructive criticism is brought to you from controllers that control on all of those networks that I mentioned uh, in episode three. So VATSIM, IVEO, uh, Pilot Edge, uh, and so forth. So. Uh, these tips and tricks are stuff that uh, are uh, meant to help you, meant to optimize your online communication when talking to an air traffic controller. And I will say that I am the, well, I'll be the first to say that I make mistakes when I'm flying online, whether it be a procedural mistake with an aircraft or it be a mistake with radio communication. But that's the beauty of the simulation world is that we can make these mistakes and learn from them and get better. And that's what I hope to do over time is, is improve. So the stuff I talked to, about today, I, I'm guilty of, of some of it. And uh, I'm hoping that uh, through this uh, episode, we can give you some tips and tricks to help you optimize not only your experience, but uh, make it more efficient for the controller and also the other pilots that are flying with you. With you, that's an interesting word. I'll talk about in just a moment. <laughs> the uh, the first subject I want to talk about is cold calling. Uh, when you're either airborne or on the ground in your computer, you're connected to one of those networks, and you call the ground controller or tower or approach or center, etc., and you say just your call sign. It's more typical to hear that situation on the ground and then that controller will come back to you you know los angeles ground november one two three four five um, that's it and then november one two three four five los angeles ground go ahead well that's two transmissions that weren't necessary when you could cr call in with your exact request uh, so cold calling can be in the form of also a radio check Meaning that if you say Los Angeles clearance, November one two three four five radio check, uh, November one two three four five Los Angeles clearance five by five, right? Thank you, Los Angeles clearance, November one two three four five. Would like IFR to Las Vegas, please. You could have said that without the radio check. Now, I've talked to several controllers who believe that the radio check is perfectly fine, but if it's followed right by a request, why not use that time to say the request? But there are situations where maybe we as SIM pilots have changed our microphone, our software, our audio, a brand new setup, what have you, and we just want to get a radio check. Well, they're going to give you a, a you know they're going to give you a report back but if you haven't changed anything and the last time that you talked on pilot edge and the fact you know it worked and maybe you can even hear the controller why do a radio check you can just do a call if especially if you're hearing the controller you can just call in with your exact request and that will help quite a bit the other thing i want to talk about was that phrase that i mentioned at the beginning with you with you is a phrase that is not required. It's, in fact, many controllers will offline tell you they, dis they it's discouraged. Don't say with you. Uh, checking in with, say, Los Angeles Center. Los Angeles Center, November 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. With you, flight level 230. You could have said just Los Angeles Center, November 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 flight level 230. You didn't have to say with you. Now some of you might say, well, I hear with you all the time in the real world. Well, it's not necessary. Think about it. Is it really necessary? Some people might say, well, 
it's a phrase that lets me continue to think about what I'm saying, etc., etc., etc. Well, that's fine. If, if, if you want to do that, go for it. But know that some pilots and some controllers are thinking in their head, not necessary. So again, I'm saying this with the spirit of trying to optimize your communication. You also want to give whether or not you're climbing or descending. Uh, it's very important. So uh, I'll give you an example. SoCal approach, November 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 9,500 descending 7,000. So that's given your current altitude, you're descending to a particular altitude. That's the way to check in on frequency. With that being said, too much information also can be had. Um, and if the frequency is busy, you know, you don't need to talk about things like your heading, unless you were told to by the previous controller. Or maybe the previous controller didn't tell you to say the heading, but you're on a heading that's not a standard heading off of a uh, departure procedure or uh, an approach. Um, you don't want to talk about your position. If you're on an IFR flight plan and you're checking in with, say, an approach controller, you don't want to give your position. They have you on radar. Your transponder code, everything is showing you on the radar where you are, so you do not need to give the position. The other thing to do is when you get handed off to a, an approach controller, let's say you're flying into Las Vegas, whether it be IFR or VFR, uh, when you check in with that controller, you need to be checking in with the weather. Now, if you try to check in with the weather onto a center frequency, they're probably going to, they may say to you, uh, give that weather to the approach controller or they may not even acknowledge the fact that you gave them weather but it's unnecessary but the moment that you check in with the approach controller he's going to want to know that you have the weather now I use myflightroute.com and if you go to myflightroute.com there is an ATIS page for Pilot Edge and so you can go to that ATIS page A-T-I-S and you can get the weather the information phonetic that is relative to that airport. So for example, Las Vegas weather is information golf. So when I get handed off from Los Angeles Center to Las Vegas approach, whether I'm IFR or if I'm VFR under uh, flight following um, or even advisories, I'm going to check in with that Las Vegas approach controller with uh, the ATIS, the weather information. Las Vegas approach, November 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5,000 with information golf. You want to give the weather. Otherwise, the controller is going to have to ask you for it, and that's going to create more transmissions on the network. If you want to do a particular approach into an airport, and you know that there's an initial approach fix that you would like to go to, ask for that procedure and if you could also have it via that that fix because that controller then can vector you to that if you get up close to it he's gonna have to circle you around vector you around for that initial approach fix so make sure that you have the particular initial approach fix in mind and also what procedure you want to run well ahead of time so that that controller can prepare for that and do the proper vectors a very important thing to do is when a controller on any of those online networks says stand by. Don't say November 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 standing by or don't say standing by. Basically stand by means don't say anything. Sit. Uh, many times you'll hear a controller say so and so stand by and they'll say such and such standing by. Don't say anything. The other thing that happens on Pilot Edge is that because we cannot hear pilots, uh, other pilots in certain scenarios, it's important to not transmit when another pilot is speaking. Now you might ask yourself, well how do I avoid stepping on top of someone or speaking on top of another pilot if I can't hear them? Well let me give you a little bit of an example. If someone just called for a clearance, you didn't hear it, but you heard the controller give back the full IFR clearance, right? And then he unkeys 
you have to assume that that pilot is reading back the clearance. How do you know when he's done reading back the clearance? On pilot edge specifically, you're going to hear the controller say read back correct. He'll say his call sign read back correct and maybe some additional instruction. If he gives an additional instru uh, instruction, you wait even longer. But if he says such and such, read back correct. Then you can wait and then you can call in uh, with your check-in or clearance request or taxi request or landing request, whatever. But if you don't hear that read back correct after you've heard a controller give a full routing, you're going to be stepping on someone and it's going to make it so the controller can't hear that other pilot, they may have to clarify and vice versa. Other pilots you could be stepping on, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So just make sure that you give, and, and, and here's another scenario, right? Let's say it's not a clearance, but you hear a pilot getting a vector, um, you know, Delta 555, turn heading 280 vectors for blah, blah, blah. Well, in your head, wait for that Delta, con that Delta pilot to read back that clearance. You may not hear him, but you can kind of time it, right? And remember, sometimes we're not faster than others. So if there's not an immediate need for you to get in and ask, just give a little bit more time and you're going to avoid those uh, situations where you're stepping on other pilots. Now, this is more common probably on Pilot Edge than, say, other networks because they have frequency isolation. It's a, it's a, it's a situation that happens in the real world. A controller may be using two different frequencies so you may not hear the pilot, but for immersion effect on Pilot Edge, they don't want you hearing a pilot that's talking to Los Angeles Center when you're on the ground, or they don't want you to be hearing such and such tower when you're up at the flight levels. So there's frequency isolation, so there's a little bit of uh, patience and knowing when to say something. Now, inevitably, we're gonna step on people. I, I've done it before. Just take a little common sense and you can avoid that situation. Very important, when you're on the ground at an airport and you're taking a VFR flight and you're asking for, say, taxi clearance, make sure that you give your direction of flight. Otherwise, the controller may not know what instruction to give you, what runway to taxi to. Uh, it could be a situation where there's multiple runways and if you say east he's going to put you on a particular runway it may be a situation where ga aircraft are taking off from different runways but again it's r related to where you're going so always when you're checking in with a ground controller looking for taxi instruction make sure that you to tell the controller which way your departure is uh, i'll give you an example uh, Torrance Ground, November 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, East Hangars, taxi with Mike, VFR to the east would be one way. Now there's, there's ways that you can put words in different direction. I'll give you another example. John Wayne, November 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, at Signature East, taxi with Golf, VFR departure to the west. It gives the controller more information and allows you to also not have repeated questions like, where are you going? The other thing that I was receiving feedback from controllers on was calling for taxi and then not moving. Uh, in some cases, this could be a minute, it could be five or 10. Uh, in one, one particular instance, a, uh, a jet called up for clearance to taxi. The controller gave um, the taxi instruction and then the, the, the jet didn't move for 10 minutes. So you ask yourself why? Well, the controller got curious and asked the jet, hey, just I gave you a taxi clearance uh, 10 minutes ago, just wanted an update. <laughs> um, my FMC didn't have me programmed for that runway, so I had to reprogram the FMC. Well, that should have been communicated. You can simply say to the controller, once they gave you a runway that you were not expecting and you did want it in your FMC before you started taxiing, just tell them, say, uh, unable for that runway, we'll call back with taxi request after uh, reprogramming. Or actually you need to make it even smaller than that. Uh, 
you can just say, you know, Delta 555, uh, unable to taxi at this moment, I'll call back. Fine, cancel taxi instruction, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, make sure that when you are, well, and then the other thing too is you can ask the controller, if it's not too busy, you can ask them what runway to expect. Now, if it's really busy, you may not want to do that. You may want to check the winds and check the flow of that particular airport. And then, um, again, once your aircraft is fully configured for taxi, then you're ready to go. Uh, but don't be calling and then sit there for a few minutes. I've done it. It's bad. The other thing to do is when changing to a new frequency, always use your full call sign. So when you go over to say Los Angeles Center, you don't want to say uh, Cessna to Tango because that's not enough. You need to say the full call sign. You need to say Cessna 12345 or November 12345 uh, or Delta 555, not just 555, or you know, you can't abbreviate. You have to use the full call sign and tell the controller says your call sign back, and then you can shorten it a little bit. But always, when checking in on a new frequency, be sure to use your full call sign. One very important uh, way to optimize our ATC communication is getting rid of filler words like um, oh, so. This is for, you know, you're like, well, why would I say four? Well, some people say 180 for November 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. You don't need to say four, you know, heading, you, you don't need to say the word four in front of the call sign. You don't need to say this is, you can just say call sign. You don't need to say, and, and again, sometimes, when we're thinking about what we need to do and say, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, we use filler words, um, so, uh, that, that type of stuff. It's gonna happen, but just try to, over time, use less and less of those filler words. Now in this vlog, I've been using probably 75 filler words. I need to even optimize my vlogs and use less filler words. One thing to do when getting a clearance is don't say as filed. The controller is going to be giving you what he's able to give you, so don't assume that you're going to get as filed. Um, therefore, if you're in a jet, for example, and you're programming your FMC, or if you're even in a general aviation aircraft and you're programming a GPS, before you go through and put in every waypoint for what you have filed, don't assume that when you go to get clearance from the controller that it's going to be the same. So I typically wait until after I get clearance to program my FMC, my McDo, my FMS, or my GPS. When we get an ATC instruction, uh, if you're not able to do what the controller is asking, say unable, and don't let the controller discover that you are not at a particular altitude, you're not following the altitude restrictions on a SID or a, or, or a STAR, or um, you know all these these number of situations uh, don't basically if if the controller says do such and such say un, don't be afraid to say unable and then the, then you're going to have some clarification on frequency and they're going to to help you out right so if you already see that you're too high on on your vertical uh, profile getting down you can let them know unable. There's an emote for that. The other thing that happens a little too often is asking to step away for 10 minutes or a longer break than normal. Um, step, asking the, the controller if you can step away for a few minutes is fine. You need to go use the bathroom, whatever. You need to go grab a co co you know, cold drink, whatever, that's fine. But don't ask to go away for 10 minutes because you are now clogging up airspace, you're making people move planes around you, etc. and don't ever pause on a network without permission. There are a few certain, very rare circumstances where if it's not very busy and you, the controller is, is in a good mood, you can ask for special circumstances. Can I pause this? I would like to do this. Can I pause for just a few minutes? And they may say no or yes, depending on the situation.
If you are a turboprop or a turbojet, always be ready for departure at the runway. Don't roll up to the runway, get up to the hold short line, and then start preparing everything. Um, try to get as much of that done as possible as you're coming up to the runway. Because sometimes when we have a lot of traffic at an airport, you're gonna get a taxi um, or you're gonna get a takeoff clearance and you're not ready to go. The other thing to do is don't roll up to the hold short line and forget or do it slowly, switch to, to the tower frequency. You need to be switching to the tower frequency immediately upon ending that taxi. Uh, that way the tower controller can talk to you. Now this is more, uh, this is very relevant when there's multiple tra uh, air traffic controllers. Say there's a separate ground controller, there's a separate tower controller. Uh, they need to be able to talk to you on their frequencies and if you're still on ground holding short of a runway then they, they don't have a way of getting a hold of you. So be ready at that departure runway especially if you're in a turbojet or turboprop aircraft. I am guilty of not being ready. I need to optimize that. One thing to do that one thing that's very important to do prior to uh, departure is brief the departure, brief the SID, brief the obstacle departure procedure. Look at the charts. There's charts available on all of our resources: charts, Navigraph app, SkyVector.com, ForeFlight. Print out the FAA charts. Uh, there's you need to look at the particulars. And then also compare it with your GPS and or your, or your uh, FMC to see if, you're, if they're matching, right? Uh, maybe you didn't update your ARAC data, so uh, certain altitude and speed restrictions have changed. You need to brief it and compare it. Uh, that way you know what to do in the event that you need to fly it manually, for example. Uh, sometimes when we're on air traffic control networks, uh, we may use uh, friendly banter. Uh, we may go outside of our normal air traffic control communication and say, you know, good morning, Fred, or, hey, that was a great landing last night, or, you know, th there's these times where these little bits of, of non-instruction uh, communication comes into play. It, it happens a little bit more when there's, uh, the frequency is less busy, but be sure to not be using any of that extra wording and phrases and um, th those, those times where we may know the controller really well. We've met them online, we've talked to them, we may have even met them in person. But if the frequency is really busy, don't be having little chit chat, little this, that, and the other, because he's busy and he needs to, it's like the real world. I've even been in the real world where a controller has gone personal for a moment and said something, something, something that was not ATC related. That's okay if there's no one on frequency, um, but uh, be careful in using that extra banter and that extra, role. you know, it's okay to be friendly and say hey, thank you and please on occasion, but again, the more busy the frequency is, the less words to use. That's, that's the goal, and I'm guilty of sometimes maybe being a little too friendly or a little casual on frequency is, is the phrase that I like to use. One thing that you want to be sure of is the distance from your microphone. If you're up really close to your mic, if you're up really close to your microphone, you might be over modulating. Uh, there are abilities to check your audio uh, on Pilot Edge recordings. So if you're a Pilot Edge pilot, go over to the Pilot Center section, listen to uh, audio recordings, and go listen to the time frame where you knew that you were flying, and you can hear your audio and you can say, oh, that sounds great, or oh, that sounds bad. Sometimes just backing off of that microphone a little bit, don't eat it, uh, and it'll help out. But other times, there's software settings where we, we may need to lighten something up, boost something else. There's little tiny tweaks that we can do for our audio, but uh, try to go out there and do that. I don't know of ways to do that on VATSIM or Iveo, or other networks, but if you guys know a way of listening to audio recordings from that stuff, let me know. You can also listen to live ATC on PilotEdge.net. There's a live app that lets you listen live. It's brilliant. The last two things that I wanted to talk about are not from a controller, although some controllers may share this opinion with me. 
with me. The uh, again, all the tips that I've talked about today, all the constructive criticism, the tips, the tricks, the do's and the don'ts, the you know, uh, those came from controllers and other pilots. These last two bits, these other pilots and controllers may share the same opinion with, but it, it's my personal opinion. Don't use November 172 Sierra Papa or November 7274 Hotel uh, when on the Pilot Edge network uh, or other networks, for example. These are the default tail numbers that are painted on uh, these aircraft, the default uh, Skyhawk for X-Plane, and then the A2A Cessna 172, the default uh, registration tail numbers uh, is the 7274 Hotel. So people get on, they're brand new, they log on with those call signs, and you're immediately identif identified as, oh, okay, they're new, um, or they don't have any creativity. So come up with your own call sign. Uh, go to myflightroute.com, and on myflightroute.com, there is a tail number generator that can be random. It also talks about how uh, a, a registration tail number is made up. What's the legal number of letters in the sequences that are necessary for a United States call sign, for example. Obviously, outside of the U.S., the call sign, uh, the, the tail numbers vary. So those are my last little two tidbits. Uh, as always, if you liked the uh, the video, click the like button. If you didn't like it, click dislike. Uh, click subscribe if you want to see more content. There's also a little tiny bell next to the subscribe. When you click it, if you want to be notified by email when a new video comes out. I'm looking forward to all the comments. I know that this is a somewhat of a controversial topic. Some people may not agree with me. Uh, they may want to come in and educate me, which is perfectly uh, great because you may have opinions that you want to share. My opinions aren't uh, always right, and, uh, and, and even the controllers are not always right. I'm just giving you a little inside information that I've gathered from others that may help optimize the network for you, the controllers, and other pilots around you. But fire away, teach me, correct me if you think I'm wrong, give me more insight, let me know what you're doing out there, both online and in the real world. As always, happy landings. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you in episode five of John Fly Versus. Take care. Love you.